you guys how you doing? I'm Dave Moore here. Just wanted to make a video by request. I posted on Instagram and asked people for ideas or if they had any questions for a video, and I got one. It is why I built my Glock instead of going with a salient arms Glock. Two answers. Number one, salient arms are overpriced and I will never buy one unless I become rich. I'm sure they work amazingly, but they're way too much money. $3,000, $4,000 for a Glock, keep it. Uh, I'll gladly take one for free or I'll enter a cheap raffle for one, but I will never spend that much for a Glock, given that a Glock is 550 MSRP. So that's, that's that, really. They're way too much money. And Agency Arms makes one that's even better. It's more practical, and I, think, I believe it's under $1,000. So I will gladly get an Agency Arms over a salient any day. So there's that. Uh, main reason that I built my Glock was I like doing the work myself. There's a lot of satisfaction from doing your own work on guns, whether you built your own rifle or did your own grip work, anything you know on a gun. Doing it yourself gives it more of a personalized feel because you can do it the way that you envisioned to do it, and it's kind of an art form. So if you like building your own, own ARs for that reason, then you're going to want to do your own work on, on your guns because it gives, like I said, that more personal personalize that more kind of uh, satisfaction out of it. For instance, when people ask me, hey, who did, did your, your, your grip work? Who did all that? Well, I did it myself. And people say, oh, that's awesome. I love it. It look, looks really good. And you get satisfaction from doing it yourself, knowing that you were the one that did that. And now I'm not bashing you know, pl places that you send it out and do it. It's just I like to do it myself. The Glock was made to be your own armorer. So I just like doing it myself. So. I'm basically just going to dive in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what parts I got and why. I'm going to try to make this quick because I've tried doing this video before and it goes too long. So basically, I'm just going to dive into it. The first part that I got was a Ghost Ink Tactical Connector, the Tactical 5-pound connector. It is a connector that is designed to reduce the trigger travel, and it is designed to give you a nice, positive, clicky reset. It gives you that kind of feel where it pushes your finger forward. So the tactical connector is not a drop in part. You do have to grind down this little tab that's on it. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Just research it and install it yourself. But you have to do some work on it and it does take a little competence and it does take a, a back plate to install or you will lock your gun up and it won't work. But I'm just going to skip over that. So the tactical five pound connector by Ghost Inc awesome gives you a nice short pull and a nice positive reset so I got that that piece first really and I loved it you know trigger is great so now I like ghost ink so I go back and actually with the connector I bought the spring kit now the springs that I have in this I have the heavier striker spring the six pound striker spring the standard spring is five pounds I put the heavier one in because I do not want light primer strikes, especially with self-defense ammo. If you get a lighter spring, the four pound spring that comes with it, because it comes with two springs, a four and a six pound, you might get light primer strikes and you do not want that. But it will make your trigger lighter. But I like five pound triggers. So I got the heavier striker spring. And that just reduces light primer strikes. The other spring I got was the safety plunger spring. Now, I'm not sure if I actually installed this or not. I didn't check. Uh, but it is a lighter safety plunger, sp plunger spring. And it basically makes the trigger a little, little bit lighter. You're not going to notice it, though. But it does not remove any of the safeties of the gun. It still gives you the safeties, but it just makes it a little lighter. But I believe I just kept the stock plunger spring. It's just a tiny spring and that little circle piece in, in, in your slot. So that spring came with it. The other spring that came with it was a heavier trigger spring. That is that coiled S spring. That is what connects your trigger bar to your trigger housing. Now that is a heavier spring. You want the heavier spring because it that spring works with the trigger, not against it. So the heavier spring helps the reset click forward. And as you pull it, it's working with you. So it's opposite. You want the heavier spring for a lighter uh, trigger pull. So I got the heavier spring. Now you, you can buy their spring kit and it, it comes with all these parts. That's what I did. I bought the connector and spring kit. Each one's like 20 bucks or cheap. And so I got heavier striker spring, 
the same or lighter safety plunger spring and the heavier trigger spring. Then, as I changed the striker spring, I lost my spring cup, so I had to get new ones. So make sure you have spare factory Glock parts, because you will lose them, I guarantee it. So the spring cups, which you will lose, I, uh, I decided that I was just going to get the Ghost Ink Maritime spring cups. So the Ghost Ink Maritime spring cups are basically like an X shape, and they allow water to flow into the, the striker chamber, which allows it to shoot underwater. Whether or not it works, I don't know, but they're cheap, so I got them. And I needed spring cups, so that's why I got those. So basically, Ghost Ink internals. Uh, easy to replace internals, all Ghost Ink. Then, I got, I either got this part first or after the triggers, but it is the Ghost Ink Bullet Forward Slide Release, which is designed for right-handed shooters with a thumbs forward, forward grip. You can hit it down with your thumb a lot easier. It extends it further out and it makes it, it gives you a more positive platform to hit. It's also designed for left-handed shooters to be able to kind of get, get your finger up. It's e easier to get your finger onto because it gives you a nice bulging, that's what she said, platform. So I got that and in my left-handed video, you see the reload and how you can just rest your finger on it and it sends the slide forward. So as a left-hander, this piece is, is a must and I will have it on all my Glocks. So pretty much ghost ink, you know, out the ass so far. Next thing I got was the Streamlight TLR1 HL, 630 lumen handgun light. I got the Streamlight TLR1 HL because it was very affordable and Streamlight is a reputable brand. It has momentary on, strobe, and then constant on. And it's 630 lumens, so shined in someone's face gives you some deterrent value, so you might not have to pull the trigger. So, got that. Now, along with that light, I got a Raven Concealment Phantom LC holster, which you guys know, know what that looks like. So, I got the Ghost Tank internals, <coughs> excuse me, I got the light, and then I decided that I was going to add some grip tape to the top. This is rubberized grip tape, some right there, rubberized grip tape from Ace Hardware. It's about $1.99 a foot, and it was actually made for stairs and boat docks. So it gives you that rubberized grip feeling. And I like the rubberized over the actual skateboard tape because it's less abrasive and it still gives you a nice contact point for flesh checks or power stroke in the gun. So grip tape. Then after that, I wanted a combat style rear sight. Now I knew about the John Jardine rear sights, but they were not made for Glock. And I heard about the battle hook sights. Well, I like Rob Pincus, so I went with his product, which is the Ice Claw EMS. It is basically just a claw, a hook, and it gives you a platform to hook onto, and it is sharp. So now you can rack it off your belt, rack it off your holster, rack it off someone's face, rack it off a table, rack it off a rack, rack it off anything. So for one handed, it is awesome, and it is just. It is a, a very good sight, designed by Rob Pincus, produced by Ameriglow, and it's about 24 doll hairs. So very affordable, definitely worth getting. One thing I thought I wouldn't like about it was how it's blacked out, but come to find out, once I started live firing with it, the blacked out rear sight allows you to see that front sight a hell of a lot better. Now, this is a combat sight, so the dovetail groove is a lot bigger than a normal sight, but you can see that front sight, and I, I can still ping steel at over 100 yards with it, no problem. So if you're a good shot, the sight won't affect that. It'll make you better because that blacked out is awesome. So that's it. Ghost ink internals, grip tape, streamlight, battle hook. All right. Next thing I got was I actually, what it, it was given to me, it is the formerly Glock made now it is the OC Customs Trigger. Try to get it to focus. OC Customs Trigger. I don't know, it might be blurry. But basically what it is, is it is a trigger and trigger connector that is polished. The trigger is adjustable. It has an Allen key screw up in this top corner here. And you basically tighten it and it brings the trigger back a little bit. 
So it removed all that slack. As you can see, this is there's not a whole lot of slack going on there. So it made the trigger a lot shorter, and I like it. The polished uh, trigger bar kind of helps too, but I like how it's just a little bit of movement, a little bit of movement, and then it breaks. So you hit that wall, and then it breaks like like glass. So with that connector and this trigger, I mean it's a perfect setup. Uh, I do not have experience with the pyramid trigger or the Haley skimmer. I like this setup, so I'm going to keep using it. Just remember that if when you install this trigger, if you tighten it too much, that safety will not engage properly, and then you have an unsafe firearm. So make sure that you are installing it properly. And a lot of people have complained about it and said that it's not working right, but if you're not sure how to install it, have somebody who's trained to do it install it for you. Because if you do it wrong and that safety doesn't engage, then it can go off if anything gets caught in there. So just make sure that safety is engaged. What I do is I break the trigger and then I will reset it and just make sure that that trigger thing is clicking and giving you a positive lock there. So that's very important. So OC Customs trigger and I got the grooved one in OD green and I like it a lot. So with that connector and this trigger, it's a perfect, perfect uh, thing for me, really. And I will, uh, you know, if you ask me about it, I would say go ahead and, and do that because it is, it is a nice setup. After that, I got the Zevtech Slim Magwell. Basically, I got this because it is a slim version of their Speed Feed, and I wanted a Magwell. Uh, Salient Arms makes a really good one, but it is for Gen 3 only and I have a Gen 4, so I couldn't get it. So I got the Zevtech Slim Magwell. As you can see, it does add some girth, but not as much as a normal Magwell. So I got the Slim Magwell, and I love the Magwell. It's awesome. Reloads are breeze. I mean, they're perfect. So it makes it a whole hell of a lot easier, except make sure that you're reloading and training without the Magwell also. That way you don't lose that skill. Zevtech Slim Magwell, about $80, and it installs very easily. You don't need to be trained to do it. Lastly, I got the stipple job. I did this all myself. Sat down for four and a half hours and did it. Stippled all the way along the slide here, and I did not stipple the back strap here because the web of your hand does not like that. So, stippled the gun, and Basically when I did it, I ground off all of the finish that's on it, smoothed it all out. I kept the finger grooves because I like them, and I stippled it. Gives you nice, I mean, stippling is probably one of the best things you can do for grip. I mean, it's awesome. It's just, I, any polymer frame gun I have now is going to be stippled. Uh, the other thing I did was I undercut the trigger guard here and here. This undercut here is a must have for me now because it gives you that higher grip. It gives you more control of the gun. This one here is for the support hand. So it just kind of goes right in there. Then I stippled the bottom here so that my hand will kind of grab onto it and it won't slide forward. So nice positive, positive uh, grip system there. So the stippling and, and the undercuts are a must for me now. And I gotta say, I love the stippling and I love when people say, hey, who did your, your grip work? It looks awesome. Well, I did it. I did it all myself. So that's why I like doing it myself. Now, disclaimer. There's a debate on whether or not modifying your Glock is a bad thing in court. Masad Ayub says, do not modify your Glock, because in court, they will bring it up. James Yeager says, do not modify your Glock, because it's fine the way it is. So understand that if you modify your Glock, especially the trigger, and you make it look all badass, but you have a lighter trigger, that's going to be brought up in court. And you just got to have a lawyer that's worth the shit to be able to get that dismissed because any modification to your gun will be brought up in court. So you just got to understand that before you modify it, if you have to use it in self-defense, that will be an issue. So kind of weigh it. Issue in court, no issue in court. Rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. So just understand that modifying your Glock could lead to legal ramifications in court. 
Um, and that's really all I have. Like I said, I like doing my own work. Everything that I have on here is for me. And a lot of people might not like the OC trigger. A lot of people might not like Ghost Ink, but I have them, I installed them myself, and I like them. So any Glock that I have from now on will have the same work done to it. And I just would recommend that you get the same parts because it works for me. But that's me, you might not like them. You might prefer the Pyramid Trigger, you might prefer a lightning strike trigger, whatever, but I like all the work that I did to it and it works out perfectly. And everybody who tries my gun, they really like the trigger and they really like the grip work. So it's so far a hit, everybody likes it. So I recommend that if you want to modify your gun, go with Ghost Ink because they are a solid, solid business, solid uh, products, awesome, and I have no complaints about it. OC Trigger, I love it, it's adjustable. It really removes that slack out of it, so I recommend that. The springs, do what you will with the springs, just understand what I said. Uh, definitely re recommend the rear sight, that's almost a must have. And uh, the light, you know, whether it's a stream light or a short fire, just make sure you have a holster for it. But that's my Glock in a nutshell. Um, I am eventually going to get a conversion barrel, that way I can shoot 9mm out of it. But right now, buying ammo from Freedom, I'm getting 40 cal really cheap, so I really don't see a need to switch to 9mm just yet. Um, that's my Glock. Uh, most of these parts you can buy are very cheap, so you can pretty much do all this work for under 100 bucks, I, I imagine. And that's my Glock, guys. Hope you like it. I'll do some close ups here. Oh, yeah, I also filled that in with nail polish just to give it some flair. That is the iDave Moore Glock. Hopefully the video quality is working out very well. Uh, makes a lot larger files, but definitely worth it, obviously. So I'm going to end this video here. If you have any questions, put them down here in the crotch box, and I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. And if you guys have any video suggestions or any products that you think would be good to be reviewed as long as I have them, I can go ahead and do that because I can always use ideas. As you know, it's kind of hard to think of everything yourself. You kind of need help for that. So you know, one, one last thing, though, is I don't know if you've heard of it, but back in the day, I used to compete in bodybuilding, and my trainer was Ben Hartman. Well, Ben Hartman's in a new show called uh, Neighbors with uh, Benefits, and it's on a and &E, I believe, and it's about swingers. Apparently, he's a swinger, but... He's on this show, so check him out. He's a big bodybuilder dude, but, but it's kind of funny that he was my trainer, and he trained me, and I won first place, and now he's on a TV show. So check it out on A&E, and uh, until then, keep shooting, guys.